Hi, welcome to week 18 of the monologue project. I do apologize. We are <laughs> we're six days late uh, with this particular piece. I had a week. I just had a week. Um, I had my big challenge this week was honestly, I had kind of a Sophie's Choice week where I had been cast in this role, which was honest to God, probably the best role ever written for a woman. And I'd been cast in this role and I was so over the moon excited. Um, and it was at a non-paid theater. So that starts rehearsals in like six weeks. And then this week I got offered a paid gig at a theater that I had been submitting to for a number of years and I had to choose. And, um, it was about four days of crying and pro-con lists and asking all the friends and driving everyone crazy. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I was at an audition and I was speaking to a gentleman I don't know. I actually don't know who this, this guy is. Um, and he said this sentence to me. He said, why should anyone else treat us like professional actors if we don't treat ourselves that way? So I turned down the... Well, I dumped the amazing best female role ever written show to do the professional theater show because I'm a professional actor, damn it, and I need to start treating myself like one. So, that said, uh, this week's monologue is The Heresy of Love by Helen Edmondson. This uh, character is Sister Juana Inez de la Cruz. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. I can't wait for you to hear it. It feels extraordinarily re relevant in uh, these times as well as when this was written. So again, this is Sister Juana Inez de la Cruz. I have to look at my cheat sheet because there's a lot of name. Uh, Heresy of Love by Helen Edmondson. Your Grace. I am uh, Sister Juana Inez de la Cruz. I'm told you wish to see me. There's something I would like to say, Your Grace, if you'll allow it. Whilst I stand behind every argument I made against your sermon of the mandate, it was never my intention to commit my thoughts to paper, nor to, to have them published and distributed about the city. It was never my desire to anger or humiliate you in that way. I wish only that you be aware of certain facts of what I did and did not intend. I am not afraid of standing trial. I, I will listen to your case, whatever it might be, and I will then refute it. I will not renounce my life. I know you have condemned me for writing plays and poems for the court, but I do not regret them, for they are tales of love of care, of despair, and of devotion to all of the things that make us what we are. And there are prelates that came before you and will come after you, I think, who see no harm in them at all. Nor can I regret the thoughts which I expressed upon your sermon. For are not all opinions put forth to be considered and responded to? Is that not the key to our progression? And why should men reserve all right to speak and write theology? If my thoughts are as learned, as exacting as a man's, why should they not then be heard? I have heard and read some poor and crude theology for men, yet it is given credence. If my arguments are flawed, if I am not as well informed as I should be, then criticize me, yes, and I will go away and think again and learn some more and try again to reach towards the truth. Why should our faith fear knowledge? For knowledge comes from Him, and without it we would be animals wading through the mud and slime. Why should that light of knowledge be less precious, less miraculous in my mind than in yours? Where in, the, where in the Bible does it say that girls cannot be wise? Show me. Prove to me beyond all doubt that fact, and I will then be silent. There is no devil in me, no, nor do I do the devil's work. You call on devils, I suppose, for want of, of any other answer. Why do you not look at me? I think you are afraid of me. Of all my sex. Why? Because we cannot be controlled? 
Or perhaps it is you yourself that you fear because to look on a woman is to know you are a man, a human being with all the frailty that that implies. And all those hours you spend at night denying your humanity, they melt away and you are left exposed.